Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tonight's uh, NHL slate. Um, this is a very strange and unique slate with respect to how to create lineups using the tools available on uh, TrueDFS. Um, and you'll see as we kind of go through this process. So again, for those of you that are watching this video for the first time, um, what I'm trying to accomplish with this, at least the free YouTube videos is to give you a repeatable process uh, where you can build strong NHL DFS lineups to, you know, just, I'm not saying these are going to be necessarily the top lineups. I'm just saying that this is a, a good process that you can go back to, to give yourself a chance. You know, I, I feel as though this has provided me with some good profits and, and, and some good sweats and, and, you know, without doing that much work. Um, the thing is, is that most of the work is, is done for you to some degree, and you just have to figure out, like most things in life, I mean, how much do you need to do for yourself and how much can you rely on, on other people to do for you and then put your spin and your take and then your kind of stamp on it to create something of your own. Um, so look. I'm not saying this is completely free, right? I'm going to be referring to true DFS tools um, it, 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 when I go through this process. So if you want to access all this information on a daily basis, you are going to have to subscribe to, to true DFS, but it, it's better than, it's better than just giving you the picks and then having you come back each day for the picks again and again and again, this is at least giving you a, a framework for how you can go about building lineups, not just today, but, but in the future using the tools available to you. Now, again, just to review, the tools that we are making available to you are twofold. Uh, number one is our projections, right? Um, we, we, I go through all different models of different people in the industry. And what I do is I back test pretty much everybody's projections and ownership projections for, for accuracy. And then I created this kind of aggregation technique where I give somebody more credit if they were better than others or whatever. And I come up with this kind of combination of the best models and the best of the best to come up with what I think is probably the best overall projection system out there because it's not really a system of making projections. It's a system of gathering the projections that were already made in kind of an intelligent way. And if you do any work with statistics and the law of large numbers, it's always going to be better to have a combination of great opinions than just trying to pick what the best one is. So when you're dealing with projection models and projection systems, I really think that 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 the true DFS projections are the best place to start. Now again, that doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to, you know, the, produce that number on this particular day for a player. Um, nor does it even mean that you're supposed to be using the median projections to build lineups. Remember when you're building lineups to you know to take down huge contests. Getting an average result is just never going to be enough, never, never going to be enough. So you're going to have to make sure they correlate well. You're going to have to make sure that the type of players are kind of, you know, have that kind of upside, you know, uh, that can win you tournaments. But you have to start with a good projection system. So that's the first thing we do is we give you a nice projection system with, 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 with projected fantasy points and uh, ownership projections as well. Um, then you have some choices. You can either build lineups on your own using those projections, okay? Remember, I'm not gonna build a lineup for you. Number two, you can use our optimizer, which we have on TrueDFS to have it, it build lineups for you, right? Using the, the projections that either we put in for you or you put in. Um, and then if you wanna get more advanced, you can use SaberSim, which is an external uh, optimizer, which just goes much, much deeper than we do in, just the regular true DFS optimizer. The regular true DFS optimizer is just going to give you the best plays, right? It's going to be the best combination of players that will score you the most fantasy points on an average basis. Okay. But what it won't do is, is give you those high upside lineups and give you the, the tail end of the spectrum as far as results go. And that's what Saberson does, you know, much better than a regular, regular optimizer, whether it be regular true DFS or any other. Now, when it comes to hockey, um, it's even more important that you build lineups 
either by hand or by using the um, the saber set, as opposed to using the two DFS uh, uh, lineup uh, generator. I'm going to go into one that is in a minute. But first, let's start with the the sheets and the projections for today. So this is the the slate for today. You'll see it's an enormous it's an enormous slate. Um, but when you go through this, you'll see that it's in a almost ridiculous way, kind of a one team slate. So we'll pull this up and actually let's first just to suspend the deal of suspense. Um, we're looking at again, listing of players down the left, the team, the position, salary, what those projected fantasy points are that I kind of alluded to before. Point per dollar, which is basically just dividing fantasy points by slate salary to give you an idea of what how you know uh, what type of value a player is. Then sheets value score, which is again uh, something that I developed, which kind of combines both point per dollar value and just raw upside and raw fantasy points. And this is the way that I like to rank the players is by sheets value score. And then ownership is the projected amount of what percentage of the of the lineups are going to to uh, throughout the entire contest are going to contain that player. And again, what you would like is to have as low of an owned player as possible, given you know the, the, the chances that you can actually score a lot of fantasy points. So what I do first, OK, and what I would suggest you do first, if you're building a lineup, you, you access these projections. And what you should do is sort by sheets value score, just like this, boom, okay? And what you're looking for when you are building by hand using the most primitive way, which is, I think, the best, you want to know the truth, um, is you just take a quick gaze at the sheet and you say, okay, are there guys near the top of the sheet that are on the same team, okay? Because what you're looking for is guys that rate well, that play together. It's as simple as that, okay? Simple. That doesn't mean it's easy, but it's simple. It's simplistic. Find guys that are going to rate the score a lot that are going to be on the ice together a lot. Because remember, you get points in hockey for goals and assists, not to mention other things. Okay? But but that's the key, is to make sure you have guys on the, on the ice together so that when a goal scores, lots of people can participate. Okay? So... What you can also do, I mean, you want uh, is, is access this column K and L to really know if the guys are going to be on the ice together. Because just because they're on the same team doesn't necessarily mean they're on the same line. So what you'd love to have is somebody, if these guys on the same team that are also on the same even strength line and or power play line. So normally when you sort by value score, it's quite a chore to, to do this. In other words, you can take a quick look and then you have to have a hunt and peck. Like sometimes you'll have a guy in the, in the rated second and another guy from the same team rated 11th another guy rated 20th you have to kind of combine them all together and, and then kind of finagle around like this on this particular day it's just literally the easiest slate in the world now, that doesn't mean it's going to actually come in this way but to, to have this in this state especially given a huge slate is essentially unheard of since i've been starting to track these sheets and to run them. Um, you see all Columbus rated one, two, three. And then just for good measure, the fourth guy is ranked ninth and the fifth guy is ranked 12th. Okay. Um, now, remember what we're talking about here. We're not talking about, you know, necessarily the best GPP plays because remember the best GPP plays has to consider ownership and things like that. And, and, Listen, I'm going to promise you this. If these guys look this strong in my projection sheet, then people are going to be playing because I am, but because they're just projected. And so that's why their early ownership projections of all the guys I just mentioned are into double digits, even though it is a full 15 game slate. So, so you are taking risk by playing this way because you are running the risk of being duped by a, a lot of different lineups and, it makes it a little harder, but for the purposes of analysis and how to build a single lineup, this is, I mean, I couldn't have created a, a, a cleaner situation than this. Um, so what, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and build the lineup. And again, this is 
particularly a ridiculously easy day to do it. So we'll pull up the uh, the, line, the uh, DraftKings lineup and we'll we'll fill it in. Just give me one sec. So we're just gonna just plug in these Columbus guys, right? And then we'll just move on. <laughs> so we have Patrick Lane, then Boone Jenner. They're all on the same power play line. This is a little ridiculous. Johnny Gaudreau, and then. Marchenko. And the defender would be I mean, Oquist. Not, not to mention, you have a fortune to spend on other guys. So this is uh this is this is this is a lot of fun here. Uh let's put in a goalie. Now again, what I like to do is just put in cheapest goalie here. That waits well, and there you go. Right near the top, you have Igor at 7,300, so may as well. No, not Ilya. I mean Igor. Igor. Now we got 6166 for man, so you could do whatever you want, right? So just pick. I mean... I would just go right to the top of the of either sheets value score or fantasy points. You play the top Toronto guys even. Matthews 8700. The next Toronto guy that you like or you could play um Ovechkin with the next best Washington guy. I mean this this type of build today will allow you to do pretty much whatever you want. Oh, look at this. You could play you could even play the two top Edmontons play. You probably get away with this. Play McDavid and Drysdale. Let's see if you can do that. That'd be pretty funny. Maybe not exactly that, but this is pretty funny if we can get away with this. Edmonton, McDavid, and then we'll put in. Now I can't quite do that. Okay, but but um, you can almost do that. You can almost do that. What else could you do? You could play. I mean, you don't need me to finish this out for you. I mean, this is like a really easy thing to build, but that's what I would do. I would go through here and then just see what the highest projected um, uh, guys are that maybe are in the same line. How about Ovechkin? Is there any other Washingtons? No. Um, Kessel and Eichel, that, that works, right? From the first line. Put that in. See what that looks like. Eichel, and then Kessel. Actually, we need another center. Um. Actually, hold on. We put Eichel over here. When I say it was the other Vegas guy, uh, Kessel at 2,800. You don't even have to do that, though. I mean, you could even, you could even play Ovechkin as a one-off. Or, or how about Barkov? Barkov and Kachuk. That's what you could do. There you go. Sorry about that. So let's go to Florida. play Barkov and then we'll play Chuck and then anything at 4100 so this is a trivially easy um, uh, single entry slate to build uh, without even using an optimizer so let's just see uh, just for fun if there's any good defensemen now, again, I'm probably not going to end up doing this because all the projections are going to change. But just pick your favorite defenseman, I guess. 
Let me just see. So we can do what we can do is sort by defense. And then anybody good? Maybe Cam Fowler on the other side of this Columbus game, maybe something like that. You won't get a goal, but you'll get, you know, and maybe you'll get a goal. Who knows? Um Okay, so the next thing I want to do is go back to true DFS. Um, and build the lineup with the true DFS lineup builder. And I alluded to what would happen when we did that, when we do this, but I'll show you. So we're here. And you go to tools and true DFS lineup builders, and we'll go to NHL lineup builder like that. So you go in here, and then you could either load your own um, your own projections, or you could just load from mine. And I just think it's obviously easier to just load from mine. So you just click load from sheets, and with any luck, it'll populate, and it'll populate like all those that information. Um, and you can lock, exclude players, whatever. But if you just want to build lineup, you just click LFG here and it'll build this lineup for you. Okay. Um, and this actually, this actually is not bad. I mean, usually the, the issue that you have with the, um, oh, we do not want to allow the opponent goalie. That's one thing you, it, it isn't, but make sure you uncheck this. Um the, the problem with doing it this way is that it does not put lines together for you. It just literally creates the best plays. Um, so this is a, something you could do for cash, but for, for um, whatchamacallit, but for GPPs, it's probably not a good idea to use the, the true DFS optimizer for, uh, for hockey. Okay. You could do this and then just make sure to tweak and make sure these guys are in the same line. And I think this particular lineup works because, again, these guys project us so well being on this first line that it's just going to come out anyway. But let's pull up uh, Saber Sim. So what Saber Sim will do, and I will, I can, you can access it either on your own or if you are a Saber Sim subscriber through DFS, you can get there right from the True DFS uh, template. So you pick NHL, and with any luck, the yes. So you'll see that the Saberson projections are in there, but also the true DFS ones are in there. So you want to pick which ones you want to use. So we're going to use the true DFS ones, and we're just going to build lineups. And we'll build, say, let's build 150 lineups. And you can do that in, 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 in less than 60 seconds. So what, what we're doing here is using our projections and throwing it through the Saber Sim optimizer, which does a much better job of creating stacks and creating upside and things like that. Now I'm I'm guessing that on a day like this, it's gonna produce the same guys, you know, but but sometimes it doesn't. Um, let's just take a look. Uh, yeah, so it's gonna produce the same guys on a day like this um, when these guys project as well as they do. Um, and then also, oh my God, all the Anaheim guys too. Something about this Anaheim game. Maybe maybe the goals are just kind of a little wider today. I don't know what it is. We get team stacks. Like two thirds of the lineups are, are Columbus, and one third are Anaheim. I mean, this is this is a full on game stack onslaught, you know. Uh, and then when you look at the stack types, five two four two four three. I mean, this is this is pretty nuts. Um, twenty four percent of all the stacks are Columbus. So when you get this, um, I usually get this type of question. I get, do you like to limit? Do you ever limit your exposure? Um, this is a question I get for all sports. My usual answer is no. Uh, I just if if I'm going to use Saber Sim and it's going to tell me the top hundred lineups all have one guy, I'm going to believe it. Okay, because I'm willing to take that type of risk. Uh. If that's not within your risk tolerance, you can certainly go ahead and 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 limit it. Like you can just well, I'm just going to save these for now. But actually, I don't need to save them for now. But 
you could say, I want max exposure of a certain stack and you can limit it that way. Right? So this, uh, I don't know whether this is a good example or a bad example of how to choose the true DFS sheets be and, and, and tools because we're coming to the same result no matter how we do it. Uh, more fun is when we come to different results with the different approaches. But um, for now, this is kind of Columbus Day, so to speak. So with that said, I'm sure it's going to be a one nothing fight. Uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.